Styx Master of Shadows is conceptually scooped right out of my head and put into a digital format for me to consume and gush over. Stealth game? Check. Set in an awesome medieval fantasy wonderland? Check. Monumentally high challenge level with a ton of enemies for me to sneak past without ever being detected? Check. Styx is a traditional 3D shadow skulker where the object is to get from point A to B without being spotted. It's not game over if you're caught, but as a stealth game and character, Styx isn't made for combat, especially since most of his enemies are twice his size or more and are armed to the teeth. Styx is lethal if he strikes first, but leaving corpses lying around will cause guards to go into heightened alert, which makes sneaking that much harder. Styx also has a few magical tricks up his sleeve, like creating a controllable clone of himself, great for distracting guards or pulling levers, turning on Amber Vision, which is similar to Dark Vision from Dishonored, or he can turn invisible for a very short amount of time. And of course, he can hide corpses in closets and boxes. Everything is in place. It's officially the holiday release season. The market is ready for a grand stealth game. Consumers are interested in playing as a snarky goblin instead of the usual cookie cutter super soldier character. But in the end, Styx is a bad game. What went wrong? Styx should have been the crowning jewel in Cyanide's collection. But before I go into the what went wrongs, here's the list of the things that Styx has done right. And there are many. Styx is set in the best designed environments for a stealth game ever. That's no hyperbole. Styx's levels are massive open maps that include countless objects to hide behind, underneath, sneak through, climb up, shuffle under, etc, etc. Every new level wowed me with the number of possibilities for ingress and egress. Yes, every player must start and stop at points A and B, but the route taken between the two most likely will not be the same. The entire game is set in a gigantic floating citadel and at its heart is an elven amber tree. The construct is so massive that skies and clouds and the distant horizon are rarely seen, but the occasionally endless depths still sell the concept home as a reality. Gamers will shuffle through massive libraries, dungeons, torture chambers, and more before seeing the final credits scroll. About halfway through the game, players double back and play through each map again, backwards, but with an increased difficulty in the number or types of guards that are on patrol. That sounds like a cheap design tactic, but in reality it shows off exactly how big and diverse each map is. I did not mind shuffling my way back to where I started at all. In fact, it sold the concept that this gigantic floating environment was a real place. The art design is also top notch. Yes, gamers and geeks have seen the elves, humans, orcs, and goblins dynamic countless times in the past in other forms of fantasy, but here the relationship feels fresh. Each race is otherworldly, not just to the player, but to the other species within the game, which is evident as soldiers ask one another if they think that goblins are real. Meanwhile, there's one hiding right behind them. And the story has a great twist halfway through that I did not see coming. For a stealth game, the story is outstanding. I'd venture as far as to say that some recent RPGs have had weaker stories than sticks. So, great story, amazing level design, great concept, great design horrible textures. Early 7th generation or even earlier textures here. Though the low resolution textures help keep the game running at a solid frame rate, they do add a disservice to the game's style. Styx himself is textured adequately, but surfaces and other characters' faces are a junky mess. The voice acting is lacking as well. It's certainly serviceable, but just as the textures weaken the style, the voice acting dampens the story. But truthfully, poor textures and voices can be easily ignored, especially when the game is half the price of a AAA game at launch. What can't be swept under the rug are the abysmally frustrating controls. Using mouse and keyboard is not great, but using a controller isn't much better. Every game relies on good controls, but stealth games require a near surgical level of precision for players to pull off the daring and dangerous maneuvers they have in mind. While on foot, Styx controls just fine. In the air, he's a floaty mess. To make matters worse, ledge detection is just garbage. Players will fall unfairly to their deaths regularly. Since a very large portion of this game is platforming, this control fiasco is monumental. Trying to shimmy my way from a standing position to a hanging position was almost impossible. I sent myself to countless falling deaths because of it. 
The game is a challenge on its own, and it doesn't need any extra help by making sticks act this poorly in what by now is a genre standard maneuver. If platforming is a key component to your game, then the platforming controls need to be pristine. Fortunately, the game does have a quick save and quick load function, but that does not make up for this nightmare. I died, and died, and died, and it was not my fault. The first level or two, it didn't bother me as much, but by the end of the game, I was pulling my hair out over it. Can controls be patched? Certainly, but I can't predict the future, so who's to say if they ever will be? But I can say that in its current state, I do not recommend sticks for purchase, which is an absolute shame. Because as I said earlier, I am Styx's ideal consumer. I love fantasy. I'm the type of stealth player to perfect no-kill runs. I don't hold graphics above all. But with Styx's horrid control scheme, I am beyond disappointed with this final product. It could have been a dark horse champion in a season full of AAA contenders. This video was made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.